Well, I mean, you mentioned Michael K. Williams, who came off that show also, who played Omar Little. Yeah. Uh, essentially a gay gangster. Yeah. You know, who's the, the most feared character on that show. Yeah, probably of all time. And mm-hmm. I mean, and, and legit, and legit too. Like Mike was legit with that. And I told him, I remember that third episode, I think he comes in on the first season and I read it. And I said to myself, I said, whoever they cast for this got a hell of a job to do, but if they do it right. And it's, it's curtains from, from it's, you know, so, and oh, Mike yeah. came on set and I told him, I said, oh, you got to do is deliver. Mike, you know you got it in you. Mm-hmm. Mike looked at me with that little, <laughs> and, and then it's off to the races, man. He did his thing. I mean, he passed away a little bit less than a year ago yeah. uh, on September 6th. Were you guys close? And, and how did you feel when you heard about it? No, no, very away? close. Um, Very close. I cried when Mike died. I definitely shed a few tears, man, because Mike was like one of the most genuine you know, loving, caring, and it's not like on that cliche shit neither. Mike loved you more than himself. And that's the that was the problem. Mike bared so much on his shoulders and wanted to save everybody, and he just couldn't. It deteriorated himself. He broke himself down trying to save everyone else, being that vessel. And that's brave. That's really what it is. He was he was really just brave at the end of the day, probably braver than anybody I know. That he was so selfless in his mission, and yo, and, and he was yo, he was dedicated beyond belief. Like that commitment, like I'm like Mike got some type of sleep deprivation thing going on. Like I got to get my little six hours. I don't know how Mike doing all this shit. Like he's there front line for the community, and, and he really means it. And then that's that's what's the sad part about him not being here. Because then, because yet yeah, again. It's the, the person that's carrying that torch we need is gone, and then we got to wait and see who picks it up or if it even gets passed down. And, um, yeah, we're going to miss him. Yeah. Now, he was always a scene stealer, whether it was The Wire yeah. or Boardwalk, Amp- Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Boardwalk, she just yeah. right, Chalky. In there. Uh, you know, Lovecraft County. Lovecraft, like, yep. Yeah. I mean, he was in Lackawanna Blues and all. I could throw, you know, I could throw it back to eight, the the original HBO films, whatever it is. I mean, Mike's going to make it good. He's going to make your, your project good or better. Guarantee. How did it feel to play Bobby Brown in the, the Bobby Christina movie? <laughs> Oh, that was a that was a that was a blast too. <laughs> Only because it, at first I said hell no. Right. I'm not doing that after the new edition story. Did you see yeah. what, what Woody McLean just did with that Bobby Brown? Right. Oh, y'all want me to? I said, oh, this is a setup. Y'all want to sabotage <laughs> my shit, right? Y'all want me to play Bobby after this kid, this young fucking kid just murdered this shit. Right. Y'all want me to come and just embarrass myself. But it was like, no, nah, it was just this humanized version of Bobby to tell his daughter's story, which I think some people needed to see or hear. And um, I'm glad I was uh, a part of that. Um, and uh, Trey... Uh, Tracy Baker, right? I think is the producer for that. And uh, good looking out, Tracy, because I didn't see it until I was in makeup. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, oh, damn, I do look like Bobby. So I'm not singing. I'm not singing. I'm not dancing. I'm not dancing. Well, let's go. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have a son sing in the musical episode. Of oh, oh, shit. I got to get my vocals <laughs> up. Drew's lament. <laughs> Boy, they love that. Whoa. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's so many movies you've done. Like, because I'm just skipping around. I mean, Brooklyn's Finest. Yeah, uh, that was another on, one. Mike, uh, me and Post Mike was in that TV one. TV series, yep. Blacklist TV series. So, I mean, really, the, I mean, you've essentially been working nonstop since '97. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I missed a summer well, or a winter. <laughs> I don't think right. so. Well, well, really, really, since '95, actually, because Clockers well, came, Clockers out, in came 95, out in '95. So. That's right. It did October. Right. So, I mean, for everyone out there who's wants to be an actor what's really the formula to consistently stay a working actor for all these decades at this point a formula i mean because unless you're just the genius mastermind that like an alchemist you could just turn water to wine this to go (laughs) you gotta believe in yourself for me it was believing in myself but see when i got my my first agent cynthia Katz at the artist group i love her to death cynthia i hope you're doing all right haven't spoken to you in a very long time. But she told me, this is the one of the only things my mom had ever walked me into in my career was to sign with my first agent. Because uh, 
essentially I was underage because I was lying to Spike to get in the film because Spike wanted a 18 to 25 year old profile. Right. And I've always kind of was older and I had this old soul anyway. So right. I got by the skin of my teeth on that. So when I signed with the artist group, Cynthia's like, see, problem with you is, <laughs> she said, because you gonna learn the hard way, man. You came in on such a top tier level, principal casted role in a, you know, a studio film. Um, and you're gonna just find out that it's not that easy. She was like, you're gonna, you're just gonna find out it's not that easy. Like roles ain't gonna just be getting thrown your way because you was right. in a Spike Lee movie. Right. She told me and my mother straight to my face, like I'm telling you now. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's good because usually, <laughs> like the usual thing you'd hear is they're like lying to you to try to work with you. Right. They're gonna be like, you're gonna be on billboards. Yeah. You're gonna be at the top. You're gonna be they front row at the, the Oscars this time yes. tomorrow, yeah. and then they this blow time you off. And they blow yeah. you off. <laughs> Right. First two, three auditions, you don't book shit, it's right. over, They're right? gone, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. right. So she's telling me, like, no, you make your mind up if this is what you want to do. Because, you know, when when I don't know how they do it now, but when you when I signed back then for, with uh, with Artist Group, they give you a monologue, and you do the monologue on the spot. I did my thing. So then I, she puts that away. She's like, okay, well, now this is what you're in for. You got talent, but you about to get your whole wig pushed back. Rejection, 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 rejection. So I tell people I'm in the art of rejection. I mean, I'm in the business of being told no. Like mm -hmm. that's, I get told no for a living. Right. Like I get told no for a living. I took care of my family being told you're not the best. Like I don't have no ego. People tell me like, you know, you can't tell me about not having my way, me not having my way. I am the way. I tell people, like, I know all too well about not having my way. Right. I'm, I, I get rejected for a living. I don't know how many people could deal with that. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. and, and then to me, it just makes me go a little harder in my mind and in my belief system of myself that you got nobody to rely on. Nobody cares about your story, your struggle, none of that. Just make it happen, Haas. Just make it happen. Don't let them see you sweat. And, and that's it. And you see that with, like, I see that in you, like, on set, like the work you put in right. to the characters and then also just how you are like professionally, right, just how right. you treat everybody. You can tell the people who have that energy on set mm -hmm. and that's from now two seasons. You see the people who come in and have that mindset yes. who treat everybody from PAs to yes. producers yes. to directors yes. to people they're in the scenes with everybody because they have that mindset of yeah. like, I'm good. I could be told no. I, this, could, this could be gone in a minute. It's it going to be on to the next minute. thing. Yep. And you just have that. And I think if you have that mindset, then that's that's what has people like Hassan, you know? They'll yeah. just always work. Well, uh, Dan Perlman and Hassan Johnson, appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, I was sincerely a fan of the show. I mean, Dan, you and I kind of met on Twitter in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, that was, I, I, was, I was saying how, I think I just, it was a random tweet. I was like, yo, I love this show. And someone was like, yo, you need to interview Dan. And then you suddenly jumped in the conversation. Yeah, someone tagged me. Oh, man, I see, that's that some, Stockton some, mentality. He's coming, he's thinking someone, about plays. Someone tagged Yeah, yeah. He's sitting plays, man. <laughs> well, I know. I, I passed it here. I know yeah. Hassan will be there. Yeah, you he see, know how to no look. Dishes. You see, you see, ah. you see, Dway just lob it up, and you're like, "Where's he lobbing yep. it to?" And then LeBron's gonna come, come in. You're like, "Oh, okay, that's what he wants. <laughs> he knows." <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, listen, dude. Whoever hasn't watched it, it's a very, very dope show. It's very different. I remember uh, you did an interview, I think, with Smoke Dizza, where they compared it to like it's like a Curb Your Enthusiasm in the Hood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Smoke I think, that, I think that's a good, that's Dizza. a good uh, analogy for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that no. was, and that, yeah, but that's all. The, the cast, you know, it's like Hassan, Kristen Dodson, but then also like comedians like Roy Wood Jr. and Yamanika Saunders and Maria oh, Bamford oh. and just like killers yeah. who just come in and, and crush it. So yeah. it's like that's what lends it that kind of curb naturalism is all of them. Yeah, it is. And they they, they make our lives easier. And, I, and I'm just glad that I can like stay afloat. He, Hassan's funnier than most of us. Hassan's, <laughs> Hassan's <laughs> is funny. Hassan <laughs> makes lines work that are not jokes. In that first season... I always think about it. It's in the fifth episode and Zayna can't dance. Uh, she, she's suspended right. and can't dance from the dance team. And then you say, 
you say to her, you're like, but you're the best dancer. Right. That's not a joke. <laughs> that and right. the way he says it, I laughed every time. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, he's and, dead in this but season, you're the best and, dancer. Like, this, what's wrong with them? In this season, he's at the art fellowship and he's talking to Nancy. He's like, my niece goes to Delaney. They can't even afford set dressing for their school play. <laughs> Again, not a joke. And the way he says it, I'm like, how the fuck does he make that a joke? Why is that funny right now? That's so like, great. that's tragedy right now. Like, when you're laughing at it. It's just <laughs> the like, school can't it's just exposition and he's making it a joke. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> nah, good shit. Oh, man. Good oh. shit. Great show. And I really sincerely hope that he gets renewed for a third season. Yeah, we, really we do too. Thank you, bro. Go we, we got, you know, good hopes. Appreciate you, man. No doubt, man. Until next time. We shall all, all right, the best. See you later, Vlad. Peace. Yeah, man. Word up.